What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And today I'm going to show you how to get to another star system in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, the primary mod that we're going to be using is a mod called Kerbal Star System. And the latest version 0 0.6 has been released and it is fully 100% career ready. Um, for all intents and purposes, the uh, mod is uh, almost bug free. It has, still has a few minor bugs, but for the most part, it's 100% working. So, uh, basically, I'm going to show you how to get to another star system, but not only another star, but um, to another planetary system, and finally, to another moon which will be habitable. So, let's get started, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so essentially, the first step uh, you need to take, and you have to handle this in steps uh, from one sphere of influence to the next, all the way to the other star system, the next planet, and finally that planet's moon. So essentially what you need to do is obviously launch into space. Uh, I start from an 80 kilometer orbit. And then you need to exit the sphere of influence of your home planet. Once you're outside of the sphere of influence of your home planet, you're going to be uh, subject to the um, influence of your uh, home star system. So you're going to be in the sphere of influence of the star. Once you're in the s in sphere of influence of the star system, uh, you need to exit the sphere of influence of the star. So in today's case, uh, we're going to be traveling to this star called Curb. And what is going to happen is it, you have to plan uh, you have to plan your journey ahead of time. So your planet needs to be in the in, in the optimal um, position in order to save the most fuel. So you the your home planet needs to be basically. A, in line and behind on the other side of your home star from the uh, from the destination star, from the target star. And what you'll need to do is burn. So the you want to have you want to uh, launch from the home planet when your home planet is in about this position. You want to be at an angle to the left of the target star system. So we're, you want to be around to this angle here, and that'll put you on a trajectory towards curb. Now, I'm recording this portion of the video after I already uh, did the demonstration, but just know that that is how you do it. So um, you wait till the planet is in this position. You get out of the sphere of influence of your home planet. You, uh, you're now orbiting the star, and then you burn prograde until your orbital trajectory is on an escape trajectory out of the star system. And what's going to happen is the more you burn, that trajectory is going to go to the right and that's going to go in the general direction of your target star system. So, and then uh, obviously you're going to time warp or you can wait many years if you want to, if you got that time. But I don't and so I time warp and once uh, your ship exits the sphere of influence of your home star system, you're going to be now subject to the influence of a black hole, and that's called the all. You can't see it here, but uh, just know that there is a black hole in the center of this uh, little galaxy here, and you're going to be now orbiting that. You're not in the sphere of influence of anything, of any stars, except for um, the black hole, the center of the galaxy. Once you're out of your star's sphere of influence, you're going to, and you're just floating there, you're going to burn retrograde until your velocity comes to nearly zero. Once your velocity is at zero, you're then going to point directly towards your target star system and burn as, uh, as long as you can, as, as with as much fuel as you can. can. But you, keep in mind, you're going to have to have 
uh, a lot of fuel to stop yourself um, and make a lot of orbital corrections and, and whatnot. And we're not talking about um, hundreds of meters per second of delta V. We are talking thousands of meters per second of delta V per burn. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to have a lot of fuel. So, once you are you have burned in the direction of your target star sy system, um, your capture is going to obviously happen very quickly. And, uh, or your indication that you're going to be captured by that star will happen very quickly and you'll be headed straight for the star. So again, you'll time warp until you get into the sphere of influence and then you're going to want to perform a orbital maneuver to um, arc your orbit to a circularized um, orbit around the star because remember you're going to be headed straight for that star and obviously you don't want to uh, run into it, so you want to arc your you want to arc your um, orbit uh, or orbital trajectory around um, somewhat close to the outer rim. This is actually going to be our target planet uh, for today's video. So once you do that, you're going to come in, you're going to be around here, you're going to wait to for the periapsis, and you're going to circularize. Once you circularize, you want to wait till you get to the descending node or ascending node, whichever is uh, closest, and you're going to match your orbital, orbital planes to your target uh, planetary system. Once your um, planes are matched, then you're going to perform a home and transfer, and I use MacJeb for all of this. You're going to perform a home and transfer to that tar uh, to that target planet, you're, and so it's going to wait. Um, it's probably going to be a year or two, who knows? But uh, until it gets into the right position, then you'll burn, and then you'll come. And it's basically like interplanetary travel in uh, KSP. I mean, this is uh, pretty much it. You. Um, get into capture by the target planet. Again, you circularize, you uh, burn at perigee, you circularize, and then you get into, this is going to be our target moon. This target moon, Tave, is a habitable planet, it is a lot like Earth or Kerbin. Uh, you're going to, after circularize, you're going to match the orbital planes of Tave, of your target moon, and then you're going to perform another home and transfer to that target um, moon. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you get captured, again, uh, you circularize at perigee, and you're in orbit. Then we have a ship right here and I will show you, I'll give you a uh, live full demonstration of this entire process right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put ourselves into an 80 kilometer uh, orbit around Kerbin, which is where you would typically start from. And yeah, let's go ahead. I think I'm going to choose the uh, curb star system to travel to. So we got to zoom all the way back out and locate where exactly curb is. Here it is. It is in different planes. Um, the best way to describe on how to get from Kerbin out to another star is basically what you need to do is you need to um, make a burn that is going to take your trajectory on an escape uh, escape trajectory out of Kerbal's sphere of influence but in the direction of the star you want to go to. So I'm going to burn some back here on this end and get our sphere of influence to be behind us. That way uh, we're traveling initially in that direction. Uh, also, delta V is going to be measured in um, 
basically thousands of meters per second. So you're going to use a lot of fuel. I uh, highly recommend, not necessarily faster than light travel, but I highly recommend um, some near future technology to uh, propel yourself away. So you're going to want to download another mod, uh, do a little bit of research. I haven't really got into a lot of research yet, um, but I'm using, I think, the spaceship that I'm going to be using here, um, it's got a lot of thrust output. It's um, you know it's obviously very very light. I am cheating in this. I've got infinite propellant and electricity set up, so fuel's not going to be a problem. Um, so the power to weight ratio in the ship is going to is uh, is very high. Um, your mileage may vary with the kind of um, spaceship design that you choose. So, with that said. Let me see where curb is again. There it is. So it's in that direction. So zooming in, what we need to do is we should, before we launch, what we should do is wait until Kerbin is in this position around the star, around the sun. Okay, so pretend that we wait for the time of year where Kerbin is in the correct position around the sun, which is going to be right about here. Doesn't have to be precise. All right, that's good enough. All right, go ahead and point prograde and fire up the engines. We gotta activate the engines first. There we go. And fire up the engines. Alright. Gotta be careful because like I said the power to weight ratio is extremely high. So that will get us outside of the um, sphere of influence of Kerbin. We'll go ahead and set our alarm clock. Sphere of influence change and go ahead and fire up time warp. I was wrong about the uh, position of the ship being around Kerbin uh, because your first step is to exit the sphere of influence of Kerbin. So you need to get around the uh, sphere of influence of uh, the star, of the sun. Alright. Now what we got to do is fire up the engines again. Currently, this is our orbit, and we got to watch this. We just want just enough speed to exit the sphere of influence of Kerbal. All this will take a lot of delta v. Okay, back off of it a little bit. That does it. So we'll go ahead and set the alarm clock again for SOI change. And this is going to be 233 years. Now, here's where um, things get kind of tricky because 233 years is a very, very long time. So what you could do is continue to burn and you can watch that speed go down but also the direction changes a little bit. Not too bad. Um, Kerbo Escape is 202 years. So the more we fire our engines, 
the more fuel that we're using, the faster we're going and the less time we're going to spend um, exiting the sphere of influence of Kerbal. I seriously was trying to go that way, but yeah, this is, I'm kind of new at this. And I don't think it really matters that much either, to tell you the truth. It's not like we're talking um, light years difference. We're only talking millions of miles, probably. 49 years to exit the sphere of influence of Kerbal. And that's 18,000 meters a second. Let's continue to fire. All right, I'll just go ahead and time over. That's 37 years. You know, we can download a mod called Deep uh, Kerbal Deep Freeze. So we'll go ahead and fire up Time Warp. And I need to enable Hyper Warp. See, we are flying out of the solar system at a very high rate. You can see the planets as they go around the sun on our way out. What happens after after we um, officially escape the sphere of influence of Kerbal, we're going to be in the sphere of influence of what's called the All. Let me make sure to add that. And what we're going to do is actually uh, slow ourselves down to nearly a stop. And then we're going to turn around, point straight at our destination star, and burn. All right. Escaping in 53 seconds. Let's go ahead and time warp that. I try not to be under time warp when it comes to the escape. Okay, yeah. So, uh, now we're kind of headed towards the center of the galaxy. What we're going to do is turn around, retrograde, and stop ourselves because um, we have to um, change our trajectory from going that way to pointing towards curb. So we'll go ahead and fire up the engines. It just requires a lot of delta V to do this. But that's why humans have not traveled the stars yet. It's not easy. Okay, uh, we're nearly stopped. Uh, we're under 100 meters per second, so um, stars and everything is traveling a lot faster than we are. What we're going to do is set Curb as the target, and we're going to point towards Curb. I'll just give you an idea of what this looks like. So there's our ship. That is the Curb system, 
and behind us over here is the Kerbal system, and that's that um, like exoplanet or, or um, Kuiper Belt object that's way out there. And we're just going to burn, burn, baby, burn. You can see that we already have a capture to curb. We're just going to try to get the the uh, transit time down as to as fast as possible. And that's basically it. I mean, that's how you travel to another star. It's not complicated. It's I mean, it's tough, but it's not that hard. The concept's not hard. Okay, that's under 100 years. Under 100 years, we've been set our alarm clock for sphere of influence change. Fire up time warp. Oh, and check this out. This is pretty cool. Uh, while we're under time warp, you can actually see us traveling. This is interstellar travel. And you can see the planets orbiting um, the sun that we just came from, Kerbal. See them go around. There's another Kuiper Belt object. And here is the Kerb system. And you can see the stars, you, you can see uh, these things orbiting each other. And even, even under 10 million times time acceleration, it still takes quite a while. I think it's just remarkable how, you know, uh, the stars, the extra stars uh, work just like other planets do uh, in this mod. You know, everything monitors what's called the all, and to our understanding, the all is a uh, black hole, and you can't actually physically travel there. But I've heard bad things happen if you actually travel there. Okay, we're coming up to the SOI change. Much closer to the target star system now. Interstellar travel. Okay, we are now now captured by Curb, and we are in Curb's sphere of influence. Let's see what else we can do. Moon, I believe, is a habitable planet. It's kind of glitching out there for a minute. Actually, Mern has a moon that is habitable called Tave. Yeah. Let's set that as target. So, uh, to get to like another moon, uh, basically, first you have to set your. Uh, the star as the target destination. Once you are captured in a sphere of influence of your target star, then you need to set the planet as the target next. And you have to intercept and, and uh, get captured by the target planet. And then once you're in the sphere of influence of the planet, um, then you would match the orbital planes to the target moon and uh, you'd create a burn and I'll show you how to do that now. We'll go ahead and circularize when we get here. Next periapsis. Okay, so that'll put us in a circular orbit around the star. Go ahead and execute.
me get turned around. So we can see where we're going. There we go. All right. The closer we get, you can see the individual planets around the stars. There's the Kerbal system way back there as we're coming into our new home. Now, in, or in order to um, get captured into the planet's sphere of influence, we're going to have to match the planes to that. Almost forgot. Okay, we're actually starting to get sunlight from the new stars now, so that's good. So, solar, pa solar panels would start working at this time, if you had them. And here we go. We have arrived. Welcome to Curb. So, yeah, this is a 7800 meter per second burn. This is actually going to basically stop us and get us captured into a permanent um, orbit. By the way, uh, the power output of this engine is around 22,000 kilonewtons, which is a lot. Powerful, powerful conventional rocket. Okay, we're in. That's our new orbit. Finally, what we need to do is we have to match the planes of our target planet. Let me make sure that it is indeed that. And we're going to match planes at next descending node. And we'll create it. That'll do it. Execute our next node. This is a almost 1500 meter per second burn. Okay, that should match our planes to the planet. check it and it looks good next we'll go ahead and do a home and transfer to target which is another 1500 meter burn and that's in 207 days that's actually not a long time so we'll go ahead and wait that out Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Engine start. All right. Make sure that looks good. and it does go ahead and set up the alarm clock for a sphere of influence change and that is in five years to get there that's crazy but we're on the 
edge of the, this particular solar system. So we'll go ahead and wait that out. Now, if you had uh, more powerful pla planet uh, planets, uh, if you had more powerful rockets um, and a better way to control them, you could possibly uh, go straight there, turn around, then stop yourself uh, and make it a lot quicker. So that's, that w is what the um, using near future technology or some sort of faster than light uh, mod would come into play. But this is just using conventional uh, rocket technology. Okay, it's slowing us down, and there is our capture. I'm going to go ahead and slow this down because we are going to tathe next. Let me go ahead. speed this up. Okay, so it looks like we're headed straight for the planet, which is not what we want to do. So what I want to do is perform a maneuver that's going to allow us to kind of uh, get into like a circular orbit. and I want it to be on the outside of Tave. Right about there. That is only 500 meters per second. Let's go ahead. Let me see, what does this do? Yeah, that's what we want. That is a 2,000 meter per second burn, but that's okay. Go ahead and execute that. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, you know, I'm sure that you can tweak the amount of fuel used, but this is just uh, showing the concept actually does work without cheating. I mean, yes, I'm cheating. I've, I've got infinite fuel and um, um, the Kerbals on board are obviously awake and seem to be pretty happy about this. Uh, in reality, you, uh, you would want to bring enough food or if you're not bringing enough food, um, then you need to put them in some sort of uh, cryogenic s sleep or deep sleep or something like that. So that is complete. Now the next step will be to circularize. Which is in 49 days. We're going to execute that. I'm a little bit concerned about getting caught in the sphere of influence of Ernil. Let's see how heavy that is. That planet is not that heavy. Or not planet, this is a moon. It's glitching out on me again. Looks like a very icy moon. Okay, 
He's going to circularize us here in a minute. I haven't even seen what this looks like. Sweet. Beautiful. Okay, we are in a circularized orbit. The next step is going to be to set Tate as a target. And we need to get into the same plane as that, so we're going to match planes with target at the next descending node. And execute. Sorry, my phone's blown up. Nice big gas giant there. Lots of starlight. That'll match our planes. All right. Last step. Do a home and transfer. There it is. That is in 15 days. Wow. Go ahead and execute that. I think that's it right there. So in 191 years, we've made it to another star. We have made it to another planet. And in just a few seconds, we will have made it to a habitable mu moon of another star. Okay, we'll go ahead and set the alarm clock to the sphere of influence change. Get rid of that. And watch as we fall down into our new home. There it is. There she is. She's beautiful. So I don't know too much about this. About this moon, but... A Okay, so the atmosphere is at 77 kilometers. We'll uh, orbit at around 100 kilometers. Let's see where we're at. We're waiting for this sphere of influence change. 
There it is. set that at about 100 so we can get a really good look. That's good. Go ahead and ex execute that. There it is. Twenty-four meter per second burn, not bad. Okay, and then finally we'll circularize. It's a four hundred meter per second burn. Execute. This is this is the final burn. New star system. New planet. That's it. We are there. Low to the orbit. I believe it's habitable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and time accelerate because I want to see uh, what this looks like on uh, all lit up. Let's see what that looks like. We have to be There it is. That is absolutely gorgeous. Alright guys, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope um, this will give you a little bit of uh, information on how to navigate around the new Kerbal Star System. Um, the mod, in my opinion, is 100% career ready. I know it's only version uh, 0.6, but um, it's pretty close to being uh, ready. It's nearly bug free. There's still several bugs that they need to work out, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it's it's 100% usable. Uh, it's great. So. 
Um, subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up if you like the video, and I will see you next time. Take care.